Hello everyone. I wish to share an interesting experience with you all. My friends were about to start a pharmacy shop and I went to help them. So when I entered the shop, the medicines were lying all over the place. My friends were trying to arrange them systematically by sorting them alphabetically as per their composition and usage. Have you ever tried to arrange things in order? Do you think it is an interesting experience to do so? Why do we try and differentiate one substance from another? Think about the scientists who wished to arrange all the elements in one table in a way that similar elements were sequentially close to one another. But what are elements? We have seen in the last chapter that pure substances can be classified into two groups, namely elements and compounds. Robert Boyle used the term elements for the first time in 1661. So can you recall what is an element? An element is a pure substance made up of only one kind of particle called atoms which cannot be broken down into simpler particles by using simple physical processes. Elements may be classified as metals, metalloids and non-metals. Can you think of some metals and non-metals which you see in your day-to-day -day life? What properties did you think of while categorizing the elements as metals and non-metals? Can you recall some common metal objects? The most common metal object is a nail, isn't it? A few other metal objects we use almost every day are jewelry, bell, utensils, hammers, etc. Which metals do we use for these objects? The easiest way to start grouping the elements is by comparing their physical properties like state, appearance, luster, malleability and ductility. What do you understand by the terms malleability and ductility? We have learned that malleability is a property or an ability of any metal that allows it to be beaten into thin sheets without breaking. Most metals are malleable whereas ductility is the property or an ability of a substance to be drawn into wires. When do we call any substance brittle? A substance is called brittle when it breaks into pieces on being beaten or hit. Most of the solid non-metals are brittle in nature. Let us now try and observe some metals like iron, copper, aluminium and magnesium. Take samples of these metals and note their appearance carefully. Observe the surface of each metal to note the color and texture of their surfaces. They have dull surfaces. Now, Take a small piece of sandpaper and rub each of the metal surface with it for about 2 to 3 minutes each. Now, observe their surfaces once again. Is there any difference? We can clearly note that after rubbing the surfaces of different metal pieces with sandpaper, each one of them has a shiny surface. This shine 
on the surface of the metal is called metallic luster. I am sure you all like pieces. Youngsters frequently ring the bell beside the pizza outlet's exit, signaling that they have enjoyed their meals and wish to express their gratitude to the chef and other workers of the outlet. Where else can you find bells like these? Which material is used to make bells? Any guesses? Bells are made from metals. Why do bells generate such lovely melodic sounds? What is the name of this metal property? The property of making sound when struck is known as sonority. And the substances that possess this property are known as sonorous substances. Thus we conclude that metals are sonorous. Let us quickly recall from the previous classes that metals are good conductors of heat. They conduct heat from one end to another. We shall do an activity in our next module to observe this ourselves. Now let us learn about another important physical property of metals. Metals are very good conductors of electricity. What does it mean? It means that metals can conduct electricity from one place to another within the metal surface. Let us perform an activity to understand this property. We shall start by setting up a circuit by connecting a battery to a bulb through a switch using connecting wires made up of copper with crocodile clips. Look at the circuit here. We are now ready for the activity. Does the bulb glow? No, it does not. It does not glow as there is a gap between the two crocodile clips. Hence the circuit is not complete and the current does not flow through the circuit. Let us now insert a piece of aluminium foil between the two crocodile clips. Turn on the electric switch. What do we observe now? We observe that the bulb glows immediately. It is because aluminium is a good conductor of electricity. Let us repeat this exercise using a pencil sharpened at both the ends. Surprise! The bulb glows again. But why is it so? It is because graphite, though a non-metal, is a good conductor of electricity. Now, replace the pencil with a small wooden stick. Now observe the bulb once again. It does not glow because wood is an insulator. It does not conduct electricity. Try the same activity replacing the wooden stick with a plastic spoon. The bulb does not glow in this case as well. It is because Plastic is also an insulator. That is the reason why electricians use plastic gloves and PVC shoes or slippers while working. So, what can we conclude from this activity? We conclude that Metals are good conductors of electricity. We also understand 
that nonmetals are poor conductors of electricity except for graphite, which despite of being a nonmetal is a good conductor. In this activity, we have used copper wires here as connecting wires as copper is one of the best conductors of electricity. The electric wires we have used are covered with a coating of PVC that is polyvinyl chloride which is a rubber like material. Why is it so? It is because PVC is an insulator. It does not allow the electric current to pass through it. Metals are strong and can hold large weights without snapping. Here again exceptions are sodium and potassium which are not very strong metals. Also metals have high densities or we can say that metals are generally heavy elements with the exception of some metals like sodium and potassium. Let us now quickly recall what we have learned in this module. Elements are classified as metals, metalloids and non-metals. Malleability is a property or an ability of any metal that allows it to be beaten into thin sheets without breaking. Ductility is the property or an ability of a substance that allows it to be drawn into wires. A substance is brittle when it breaks into pieces after being beaten or hit. Metals have a metallic luster. Metals are sonorous and make a sound when struck. Metals are good conductors of electricity. Non-metals are poor conductors of electricity or they are insulators. Graphite despite being a non-metal is a good conductor of electricity.